How's everybody doing? Everybody doing well? Hey, my name is Josh Turner. I'm the student ministries pastor here. And stop it. I don't know what to do with that. It makes me uncomfortable. Uh, but man, keep your hands going, man. Help me welcome all of our campuses uh, that are watching us, joining us online, everyone online, St. John's, St. Aug, Hardy. Man, we gl we're glad that you guys are here with us. Um, and like Pastor said, uh, next week he will be back, and he's actually going to be starting a new series on, um, uh, Pastor's going to be starting a new series on, um, God, I can't. Yeah. Everything sounds better with Marvin Gaye. Doesn't matter what it is. I got you. All right. Ah, sorry. Okay. We're good. So, have you ever noticed how you can say something and then drop your voice like three octaves? Like, yeah. Or I can go, yeah. And it's like immediately sexier when you drop... You're, I, that's how I talk at my house all the time. I say, hey girl, get me some orange juice. She says, no, get it yourself. And so I'm like, all right, it didn't work. But next week, we're going to start a series with Pastor Stovall called In Love, and we're going to be looking at the book, The Song of Songs, uh, and man, it's going to be marriage, relationships, uh, and sex. It's going to be awesome to come in and, uh, and learn about God's plan for sex and marriage and relationships. Amen? And so we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. Like Pastor said, the way that we're going to kind of get started this morning is by doing a continuation of last week. And if you weren't here last week, I encourage you, man, to go get Pastor's message uh, that he preached, which was training with transparency. Transparency, uh, and really, he he just set it up perfectly. It was a call to us as Celebration Church to get transparent and to get into some relationships with some people that we can be transparent with, that we can grow with, and when that happens, we will see ourselves mature spiritually and grow closer to Christ. So, what I want to do this morning is very simply, I want to give you four practical things that connect groups do in your life. You know, it's good to read the Word of God and to go deeper and to break down Hebrew and Greek and to really get a context and understanding of when things were written and why they were written and who wrote them and what was the, the situation of the government that time and to fully understand everything. But sometimes it's good just to read the Word of God and pull out some practical things that we can apply to our lives. Amen? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at four practical things that connect groups do in our lives. But before we get into those, will you please pray with me? God, I thank you so much that we are able to come in here. God, that we are able to focus on your son, Jesus Christ. God, I thank you, God, that you have formed and built relationships, Lord God, that you have designed us, God, to be in relationships with each other, God, and that you are able to use it to help us grow closer uh, to you and your son, Jesus Christ, and to mature in our faith. God, I pray over the next few moments that we spend together, that your spirit would move on our hearts, Lord God, and it would move on our minds, drawing us closer to you. And God, we pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. This morning, you're going to get kind of what I'd like to call like an advertisement for Connect Groups. And I have two goals for this Sunday. I have two goals. My first goal is this. There's a lot of you in here that you have been going around the mountain over and over and over. There are certain things you can't get out of. There are certain addictions you can't break. You feel like you're kind of stuck in a place in your relationship and in your walk with God. And what you need so much is to get involved in a connect group. And my goal is for a lot of you that when you leave today and you walk out these exit doors, that you stop at the group expo and you talk to Pastor Keith or Pastor Jason or Teresa or whoever it is out there and you sign up to get in a connect group. My other goal is this. There are some of you in here that more than you need a connect group, you need to get right with Jesus Christ. You need to settle in your heart who Jesus is today. And there's some of you that you need to connect, you need to commit your life to Christ for the first time. And there's some of you in here that if you're honest with yourselves, you're far away from God right now, you walked with him at one time, but you need to recommit your life to Christ. Listen, it all comes down to what do you do with Jesus Christ? Everything. Are we, are we alive this morning? Listen, here's the deal. We are a live church. We are not a dead church. We shout back at the preacher. It helps me either preach better or faster. Both ways you win. So just holler back. It's all good. If I keep going, 
when you're clapping, it's because I'll lose my train of thought because I'm very ADD. So we'll just get all that out there. I feel better now. Okay. The first thing, if you're taking notes, the first thing is this. Connect groups give you a place to belong. Connect groups give you a place to belong. All of us have this desire inside of us to belong. All of us have this desire in, of a, in us to know people and to be known by people. Nobody likes going to a place or showing up at a place or going to dinner or go, where they don't know anybody. Think about all the times that you have walked into a room, because all of us do this. Let's be honest. You walk into a room, you scan it to see who you know, and then you walk over to talk to them. Because nobody likes being the awkward turtle standing over off the side not talking to anybody. Every one of us, we want to feel like we belong. We want to feel like we know people here. We want to feel like people know us here. And so what we've got to do is we've got to know that as the church, now when I say as the church, I'm not talking about Pastor Stovall, Pastor Kerry, or the leadership team or the pastors on staff. I'm talking about all of us collectively together as the church of God, that all of us, it is all of our jobs to never make anyone feel awkward or like they don't belong. So here's our goal. Our goal is to take this mass sea of humanity that we have here at Celebration Church. We had a 9.30 service that was almost full. We have an 11.30 service right now with a ton of people in it. We'll have a 5.30 tonight with a ton of people in it. And we'll have a Wednesday night with a ton of people in it. Our goal is to take this and to funnel it down into some groups where people can know other people and people can be known by other people. Our goal and our job is to help people get in community and help people be a part of a connect group where when they come into church, there's someone they know. Think about this. How many times, and not all of you have done this, how many times have you called someone to go to church with you and because you found no one to go to church with you, you didn't end up going to church yourself? There's a lot of people. You going to church? What are you going to do tonight? You're not going to go? Okay, well, I probably won't go either then. That's reality. So what we want is we want everyone to always know that when they come into these doors and when they come into this arena and they come into this sanctuary, that there are going to be people here that are happy and expectant to see them. And the way that we do that is through connect groups. Pastor Stovall can't know everybody. I can't know everybody. Pastor Kerry can't know everybody. James Price can't know everybody. We can't know everybody. Listen, we're not the church. We are all the church, every single one of us in here. And so it's all of our jobs to help people find a place to belong and fit. And listen, you have every opportunity in the world to do that through connect groups. There are some of you in here right now that you don't feel like you belong in here. And the only reason that you don't feel like you belong in here is because you don't know anyone else in here. If you want different results, you're gonna have to do something different to get different results. So what you gotta do is you gotta walk out those doors at the end of the service. And you gotta go up to Pastor Keith, who's wearing a a bright orange shirt, you can't miss him. He looks like a pumpkin. And you gotta say, Pastor Keith, I need to get involved in a small group or a connect group. You gotta go up to Teresa, you gotta go see one of the people standing out there and say, listen, I've been coming to this church for a few years now, I don't know anybody, can you help me get plugged in? Can you help me become a part of what God is doing here in a deeper, in a smaller, in a more community sort of way? When I got saved, I got saved at Celebration Church almost 10 years ago. I came in pothead, drunk, had a full head of hair. It was great. That was one of the things I had going for me. And I got saved. I raised my, I mean, it was the first service we were ever here. It wasn't like I came and I was like, I'll try this. I mean, it was first service weeping on the left side of the stage to the point where my wife was like, just get in the car. We'll handle this when we get home. It was one of those deals, man. I mean, I got saved. I got radically saved. And so what happened when I got saved is I realized there were some friends that I had to let go of. There were some friends for a season I couldn't walk with them, not because I'm a Christian and I'm better than them now, but because I wasn't strong enough to be around them. It was all about me wanting to be better, not them being too bad. You understand what I'm saying? And so what I did is I had to separate myself for a while. And so when I separated myself, luckily a guy by the name of Clint Hendry, who led me to Christ, actually invited me to be a part of the Celebration softball team. 